It's a veggie BLT pita! I totally suck at video games, but love to play them anyway. Aloha! Veggiepita here with another monthly tip, or thing I've played. If my theme song didn't clue you in, I'm not very good at games, and thus I rarely beat any, but that doesn't stop me from playing a whole lot of them. So every month I'll pick a game I've played, but not yet beaten, and give a brief overview so you can figure out if it's worth your time. For March of 2015, I'm actually going to talk about a recent release. This month's tip is Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters for the PS3 and Vita. You play as a highly customizable transfer student who meets some interesting characters on your very first day. During a tour of the school, you suddenly get pulled into hunting and exercising a ghost. You do such a good job that the Gatekeepers, a small occult magazine company by day and Ghostbusters by night, hire you on the spot. Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters is broken up into chapters, each with their own opening and ending credits, just like episodes of an anime, which is pretty neat, actually. Each episode has some visual novel segments, as well as battles against ghosts, using a turn-based strategy RPG system. And both of these are confusing as hell. But Vegepita, you ask? How can visual novel gameplay be confusing? Don't you just read words and make dialogue choices? Well, yeah, there is a little of that. But there's also a five senses system, where to respond you first have to pick an emotion – love, friendship, sadness, anger, or curiosity – and then a sense – taste, touch, smell, hearing, or sight. Let's say someone says, nice to meet you. What kind of response do you think sad smelling would make? That kind of response, I guess. Oh, and don't be fooled by the tongue. It doesn't mean talk. It doesn't mean talk at all. So, responding to people using the five senses wheel makes every decision a surprise, but that's kind of interesting in its own way, and adds replay value, letting you be a skeevy perv one game or a touchy emo kid the next. And while you may not want to curiously lick people, doing the same thing to objects may yield more favorable results, so experimentation is key. There are also ways to bond with your teammates in the gatekeeper's office, in a more traditional visual novel experience. Speaking of the office, there are a lot of things you can do there between episodes. There's a photo album to view any scenes you've unlocked in the game so far. The locker is where you can equip items and weapons, which you acquire through battles, training, buying from the convenience store conveniently located above the office, or having the tech guy on the team assemble. You use the whiteboard to train with your team and gain experience in a bunch of things that I don't know what they do yet. The training does give you some nice character close-ups, though. You can also learn new moves from certain characters through the whiteboard. Each episode has a priority ghost hunting mission, but you can use the PC in the office to find side missions. It looks like a normal website when you click on it, but when you enter this special command, BAM! Secret website. The whole secret website thing is not explained anywhere I can remember. I just kind of came across it while checking out all the stuff in the office. But this is how you get more experience and money between the main missions. And just like how finding these side missions wasn't explained at all, battles in this game are explained just as poorly. The tutorial mission tells you exactly what to do for two turns, then just loses all interest and says, do it yourself, have fun. I'll impart to you now what little I have managed to pick up. Any movement, including turning in place, costs AP. Attacking, using items, and special moves also cost AP. Ghosts can move anywhere in the blue projected area, maybe attacking or maybe fleeing depending on their scream meter, and everyone does their projected actions simultaneously. Battles become an intense effort to guess where the ghost is going to go, use the most efficient movement AP to get to that spot and face the right direction, and decide whether to attack or not. If you miss, it's highly likely your character will destroy a random object in the building, and that cost gets taken out of your final compensation, which can lead to some pretty sad battle results. The tutorial left me completely lost, and trying a random side mission didn't help as it added to the confusion when I was also given the choice to buy and set traps ahead of time without any explanation on how to use them at all. I'd almost given up and figured the game was for far better people than I, until I played the board game. Hypernatural is not a magic explanation button. It's not an in-depth tutorial on battles. 
It is a game that is somewhat similar to how battles are done on missions, but has no consequences for playing around or losing. And seeing the AI players move randomly and guess at where to attack, missing quite often, helped me realize that it's okay to miss. It's okay to guess and get it wrong. That doesn't mean I'm failing spectacularly like I thought, it just means I need to play more, experiment, and get better. And hey, playing Hypernatural even nets you TP and experience, so it's a great tool to play around with, at least as early in the game as I am. Some battles go better than others, but if you save beforehand, it's easy enough to reload and try again. Taking side missions and playing some Hypernatural got me confident enough to take on the Episode 2 Priority mission, and it actually wasn't bad at all. Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters isn't going to make my list of favorite battle systems, but it's not as scary as the tutorial battle led me to believe. The art in this game is gorgeous, and reminds me a little of Odin Sphere or Dragon's Crown. This is apparently due to the Ghost System, or Graphic Horizontal Object Streaming, that makes the 2D art seem to move in 3D. The background images don't seem like much, but they add a sense of realism. I've stayed in a Nakano apartment, and the one they show in Episode 2 could have been in the same building. The ghost designs are unique enough to be interesting so far, but it's the main character art that shines the most. The sound in this game, however, leaves something to be desired. I appreciate that they left the original Japanese voices in, but voice acting is a very sparse affair. Since much of the game is reading text, the background music should fill in for the lack of voices, but, well, it's not the greatest. It's cute that you can change to different songs using cassettes in the car, but none of the songs made me want to listen to them in particular, though that may just be due to my taste in music, so your mileage may vary. Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters has some cool ideas buried like hidden treasures for players willing to dig deep. I miss the days of instruction manuals, and this game is a prime example of why they're still necessary. Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters throws you in the deep end and never bothers to check if you sunk like a rock or broke through the surface to swim like a pro. But you know what? Even though I suck at ghost busting and all my teammates think I want to molest them, I like this game. It has a weird charm. I'm barely into the third episode, so there's a lot more in store, but I'm excited for it. And that's Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters, a confusing mess of a game at first that may grow on you or may not. I learned through the internet that this game is kind of in the same universe as the anime Tokyo Majin, and that there are other games in the series that were never brought to the US. Kudos on Access for giving it a chance. If this tip has sparked some interest, go pick it up or download it if you can't find a retail copy. I bought it on PS3 so I could capture footage for you guys, but I'd probably suggest picking the Vita version up, since there can be long stretches of time between saving opportunities. If you find yourself as charmed as I was, or confused as I was, let me know in the comments, on Twitter, or my Facebook. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed!